Krishna Korat welcomes our campus director and trustee Sri Sanjay Wadhav sir. Welcome sir. I also welcome respected guest and speaker Dr. Kamal Singh Rathod sir. Uh, you are a warm welcome in this webinar. Welcome sir. I also welcome faculty members and all the participants on behalf of Sri H N Shukla Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Rajkot. Now, let me introduce our institute in few words. Sri H N Shukla Group of Colleges offers different twenty-two courses for twenty-two years. Our campus is having well-developed infrastructure and hostel facility, better educational system. skill development program for students we organizes many events festivals as the aim it is for the students and by the students sri hn shukla institute of pharmaceutical education and research was established since 2005 our institute is approved by aict and pci and it is affiliated to gtu and our institute always tries to provide better knowledge and platform for the students who are enthusiastically interested in the pharma field this webinar will help you to get knowledge about recent advancement in ocular drug delivery system before starting the webinar let me introduce and give a brief introduction about today's speaker dr kamal singh dator sir has wide experience and knowledge in research and various sector of pharma Sir has published so many books. Sir has guided many PhD and MPharm students. Many students also completed his BSc project under the guidance of him. More than hundred research and review articles are published by Sir, and we are so glad to have you, Sir, in this national e-webinar. And for sure, all the participants will get much more benefit of your knowledge and ideas. Now, I request. our campus director and trustee sri sanjay wadhav sir to say a few words uh, please sir i hand over the mic to sir please sir uh, good morning all national seminar e webinar mein hissa lene wale sabhi professors vidyarthiyo aur dr kamal sir rathod sir sir ko mera namaskar aur behalf of hn shukla group of college main sabka swagat karta hu आज श्री एच एन शुक्ल फार्मास्यूटिकल एजुकेशन एंड रिसर्च कॉलेज के अंतर्गत जो ई वेबिनार का आयोजन हुआ है उसका उद्देश्य रिसर्च के क्षेत्र में विद्यार्थियों और प्रोफेसरों का योगदान बढ़ाना है श्री एच एन शुक्ल ग्रुप ऑफ कॉलेज लास्ट 22 टू ईयर्स से 22 टू कोर्स चलाते आए हैं और इस कोविड की गंभीर परिस्थिति में ट्रस्ट ने यह सोचा कि भाई इस परिस्थिति में हम सोसाइटी को और लोगों को कैसे मदद कर सके इसके लिए दो दिन पहले ही एच एन शुक्ल ग्रुप ऑफ कॉलेज ने एक हॉस्पिटल शुरू की है कोविड केयर सेंटर की शुरुआत की है और बिना कोई चार्जेस लोगों की सेवा करने का हमें मौका मिला है एज ए एजुकेशनलिस्ट हमारा ये दायित्व है कि लोगों को कम से कम इस परिस्थिति में मुश्किल हो और उसको ज्यादा से ज्यादा हम उपयोगी हो सके और लोगों की सेवा कर सके इसके लिए पैरामेडिकल स्टाफ और हमारी यह जिम्मेदारी है कि कुछ रिसर्च में ऐसा वर्क करें कि जैसे लोगों की सुविधाएं बढ़े और उसकी बीमारियों में उसे राहत मिले इस ई वेबिनार का आयोजन इसी उद्देश्य से हुआ है और मेरी शुभकामनाएं हैं डॉक्टर कमल राठौड़ सर को और सभी स्टाफ मेंबर को कि इस वेबिनार के थ्रू बच्चों को और प्रोफेसर को अच्छी से अच्छी माहिती मिले और सोसाइटी में उसका योगदान बढ़े धन्यवाद थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर योर काइंड वर्ड्स नाउ मूविंग फॉरवर्ड आई रिक्वेस्ट अ स्पीकर डॉक्टर कमल सिंह राठौर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर। गुड मॉर्निंग सर। थैंक यू सो मच मैगा 
on recent advancement in ocular drug delivery system thank you very much much so we are discussing here for recent advancement in ocular drug delivery systems on in this national seminar as you know our human eye is consist of uh, various like sclera or uh, choroid cornea ciliary ciliary body and secretion of the human lenses retina and you know two parts are there anterior segment and posterior segment of the eye one third is covered by the anterior segment and two third is uh, covered by the posterior segment and uh, mechanism of uh, ocular absorption is non corneal absorption and uh, corneal absorption two types of absorptions are there Uh, in non corneal absorption penetration across sclera and conjunctiva into intraocular tissues and that is uh, non productive because penetrated drug is absorbed by the general circulation but in case of corneal absorption outer epithelium that is the rate limiting barrier uh, whose pore size is 60 angstrom so that only small molecules or small ionic and uh, lipophilic molecules can cross it Uh, otherwise uh, big molecules or big ionic uh, they cannot uh, cross it and this transcellular transport and transport between corneal epithelium and stroma that is uh, uh, through absorption through this corneal absorption and the general pathway for ocular absorption is uh, when drug is in tear fluid 5% of the dose uh, is uh, absorbed from the ocular absorption and um, when drug in tear form systemic absorption is 50 to 100% of the dose and uh, the major routes are conjunctiva of the eyes and the nasolacrimal duct then minor routes are like uh, lacrimal out uh, uh, lacrimal drainage pharynx gi tract skin and cheek and lids aqueous humor and inner ocular tissues and in uh, when you see the ocular absorption from the uh, 5% side then that is corneal route that is only uh, primary route you can say and only small uh, lipophilic drugs is absorbed from this part and uh, conjunctival and uh, scleral route is the large and hydrophilic drugs is absorbed from this part so from corneal route this goes to aqueous humor there it goes to ocular tissues and uh, from there this goes to systemic circulation and then from systemic circulation this is a pharmacological activities there and uh, then uh, elimination is taking place there means metabolism and uh, excretion is taking parts there now various factors affecting the intraocular bioavailability because uh, in uh, our ophthalmic cavity there is main problem is uh, bioavailability when you instill drug into the eye cavity then only you know only 5% to 6% drug is bioavailable so uh, scientists are working towards this that we can increase how we can increase the more and more drug available to the ocular in uh, posterior segments or uh, inside our anterior segment so there are so many uh, different factors uh, they affect like inflow and outflow of uh, lacrimal fluids efficient nasolacrimal drainage then interaction of the drug with the proteins of lacrimal fluids as you know uh, in our lacrimal fluid protein is available so sometime protein binding is also taking place there so that uh, this is and dilution with tears sometime this drug is diluted with uh, our lacrimal fluid okay and uh, you know in our lacrimal uh, glands are there there is a uh, inferior lacrimal punctum is there naso lacrimal duct is there and superior lacrimal punctum and lacrimal sac is there and the inferior meatus and uh, turbinates are there from there drug is drainage from uh, uh, our naso lacrimal duct and only small amount of drug is bioavailable and uh, when we use uh, polymers in ocular drug delivery systems they increase viscosity they reduce uh, drainage and uh, polymer muco adhesive vehicles are available they retained in the eye due to the non covalent bonding between with conjunctival mucin mucin is available in our uh, lacrimal uh, drainage and mucin is capable of uh, picking up 40 to 80 times of weight of water so uh, by using this polymers we can uh, increase the residence time in our eye you can say 
and there are so many barriers in the eye also easily uh, drugs are not uh, penetrate in our eyesight because so many barriers are there like uh, tear drainage is there uh, uvo scleral outflow is there episcleral flow is there uh, then cornea itself is uh, uh, providing barrier to many drugs because it is having epithelium stroma endothelium these are the uh, barriers for the most of the drugs and um, aqueous humor and uh, iridial vestibular endothelium and ciliary non pigmented epithelium that is blurred aqueous barrier and another one is blurred retinal barrier these are the barrier in our ocular system so and you see the uh, in this slides you will find that uh, different uh, uh, part of uh, like uh, in uh, cornea there is tight junctions uh, before uh, epithelium and uh, stroma and endothelium so all kind of drug cannot penetrate easily very uh, like some drugs are in nature they can cross uh, slightly but uh, like it, when topical administration then it is so much problems are there when you do intravitreal administration then you can send the drug into the vitreous humor and subconjunctival administration also we can send drug uh, inside similarly like conjunctiva and the posterior segment they also having uh, barriers uh, in form of uh, different layers of the tissues like uh, internal limiting membrane is there and retina then retinal pigment epithelium and brooks membrane uh, choroid and sclera this is available in posterior segments okay and uh, in uh, conjunctiva there is tight junction initially then goblet cells are there and uh, the stroma and sclera is there so they provide the barrier for the drugs now some traditional routes uh, or you can say ocular routes for delivery of bioactives means when uh, we deliver some uh, pharmaceuticals or drugs inside the ocular cavity uh for example if we are giving uh, by the route of administration topical there are advantages uh, means this is very convenient route and uh, uh anybody can easily take it but the, you know there is a limitation is inefficient delivery of uh, the posterior segment when you instill the drug into the topical uh, way it will not reach sufficient quantity to posterior segment and uh, nasolacrimal drainage is also a reason uh, because uh, drug is uh, you can say excreted from our cavity and short contact time of the drug on the ocular surface okay and in, in a systemic circulation uh, or you can say systemic administration of the drug for the ocular cavity then convenient to deliver large amount of compared to the eye drops when we do uh, systemic uh, delivery uh, then limitation is poor bioavailability of drug in retina and systemic absorption and in intravitreal you know drug delivered directly to the vitreous and retina in form of injection or implants injections and implants are used for the for the drug sent to the vitreous cavity or posterior segment but there are some problems uh, when we use implants or uh, injections uh, in for longer period of time then there are chances of cataract or endophthalmitis retinal detachment or hemorrhage is possible because uh, you required some incision to send this implant to uh, the site so hemorrhage is possible and uh, next route of administration is uh, subconjunctival both anterior and vitreous level of the drug can be achieved and apis common route of administration but uh, you know limitation is difficult to deliver drug to the retina due to presence of retinal pigment epithelium in retrobulbar injection this provide medication to the posterior segment for the treatment of posterior diseases various diseases like uh, glaucoma or uh, age related macular degeneration okay but this limitation is provide the entry is uh, very route is very less at the drug to that part and uh, uh, intracameral injection this provide uh, uh, deliver drug directly to the anterior and uh, vitreous chamber and difficult to deliver the drug to the posterior segment in uh, subretinal injection this deliver drug to the retina 
but limitation is retinal detachment occurs as a result of sub retinal delivery now various common disorders what are different uh, common disorders associated with various tissues of the eye like conjunctiva or cornea or sclera or different miscellaneous when conjunctiva is uh, concerned there, there is conjunctivitis possible or uh, infective conjunctivitis because of some bacterial uh, contamination allergic conjunctivitis and in cornea ulcerative keratitis is possible some ulcers is possible because of the bacterial uh, uh, or another reasons and non ulcerative keratitis is also there in sclera a scleritis uh, is inflammation of the sclera or uh, that is also anterior side or posterior side both are possible and in miscellaneous uh, disorders like glaucoma diabetes retinopathy age related macular degeneration that is also now different principles and uh, practices of various drug delivery systems to the eye different drug categories are uh, uh, utilized for different diseases like h1 receptor antagonist anti glaucoma drugs immunomodulatory drugs anti fibrotic drugs anti inflammatory drugs anti viral drugs anti fungal agents antibiotics so this kind of uh, medicines are generally used uh, for ophthalmic uh, drug delivery systems different requirement of control uh, ocular delivery when we use this kind of drugs for ocular drug delivery systems then we have certain requisites of uh, like we we wanted polymeric solutions of uh, methyl some these are some examples like methyl cellulose or polyvinyl alcohol hydroxypropyl cellulose polyvinyl pyrrolidone and uh, phase transition system uh, we apply for uh, uh, these are the stimuli sensitive Uh, when we use uh, lutrol fc 127 or poloxamer 407 uh, this increase the viscosity uh, because of the uh, temperature uh, region when it rise to 32 degrees centigrade uh, this is the temperature of uh, our eye cavity then it convert into the liquid to gel so you can say this is phase transition system and uh, okay and the lutrol uh, this is okay and when pa sensitive when we use cellulose acetate phthalate uh, this is i when also other or uv la uv uh, radiations or light because of this also uh, sold to gel transition is take place so there are uh, uh, the controlled delivery systems and myco adhesives bio adhesive doses forms Uh, we use polycarbophils like uh, acrylic acid best polymers uh, collagen shields are used uh, that is uh, colosomes these are used for the antibiotic impregnated soft contact lenses these soft contact lenses are impregnated with uh, uh, antibiotic drugs or uh, other drugs which uh, uh, we wanted to use and uh, polymeric colloidal dispersions that is in form of uh, oil in water type of emulsions we can prepare polymeric colloidal dispersion through this we can increase the bioavailability of the drug ocular penetration enhancers uh, when we use uh, penetration enhancers uh, for the eye uh, we can increase the more uh, concentration of drug inside uh, the cavity and uh, ocular anthophoresis in ocular anthophoresis uh we use electric current for increase uh, the drug inside the uh, ocular uh, cavity for penetration enhancement we use certain uh, uh, chem certain chemicals like or some certain compounds like cetyl pyrimidine chloride or ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid that is known as edta and uh, polyoxyethylene castor oil that is pco we can use uh, this for the control ocular delivery systems next segment is ocular drug delivery system and what kind of different type of uh, doses form available for ocular drug delivery system you know conventional and traditional doses forms like solutions gels ointments suspensions ear drops these are available uh, easily but their bioavailability problem is there they are not uh, proper uh, bioavailable and uh, 
in advanced delivery systems there are uh, sclerer plugs are there punctum plugs are there gene therapy uh, is used and stem cell therapy and sirna technology sirna technology is also used for the gene transport uh, mechanism okay and um, for control delivery systems there are this is the major concern nowadays for increase the bioavailability and uh, reducing the side effect like implants hydrogels dendrimers iontophoresis polymeric solutions penetration enhancers contact lenses that is drug impregnated contact lenses nano suspensions micro emulsions cyclodextrins and phase transition systems that is in situ system muco adhesives nano wafers so these are many control delivery systems which increase the bioavailability and drug availability to the posterior segment also when we use all these systems we can increase uh, the concentration of drug and uh, uh, we can uh, we can reduce the whatever uh, disorder or problem is there and another part is particulate systems in particulate system like nanoparticles micro particles uh, neutralized lipid carriers or solid lipid nanoparticles in vesicular delivery systems there are vesicles uh, we use vesicles as a uh, uh, carriers for the drug a hydrophilic or lipophilic both kind of drugs can be delivered through this vesicular delivery systems uh, like liposomes niosomes pharmacosomes discomes cubosomes so these are uh, some approaches which are used for uh, uh, delivery of the drug and uh, retrometabolic delivery system like soft drug approach or pro drug approach chemical delivery systems these are the some uh, you can say ocular or recent ocular drug delivery systems now conventional doses forms in conventional doses forms uh, we know solutions gels ointments suspension emulsion inserts and uh, formulation factor like physical considerations uh, doses on these factors uh, we choose different kind of this traditional or conventional doses forms okay, how much dose is there and uh, what is the caldesic activity how much corneal absorption is or non corneal taking place transcorneal penetration how much transcorneal penetration by the drug is possible enzyme metabolism um if a drug is metabolized by enzyme in that cavity and corneal barriers so these are some formulation factors which are considered before prepare uh, formulation of the uh, this conventional doses forms and certain uh, selection criteria are also there like duration of action drug target site reduce frequent dosing patient compliance post effectiveness safety physician requirement so these are certain uh, selection criteria on which uh, uh, on those basis uh, we select whether it is solution form or gel or ointment or emulsion or certain inserts mode of administration is uh, intracameral injection or intraporosis subconjunctival injection retrobulbar injection these are certain next one is disadvantages and advantages disadvantages and complications associated with ocular drug delivery because in uh, ocular uh, drug delivery there are so many uh, complications are there when we want to use uh, implants intraocular implants you know there are risk of uh, retinal detachment and uh, intravitreal hemorrhage or it is invasive technique we have to cut uh, a certain part uh, to make this implants available in that particular site in when we use intravitreal injection there is a risk of uh, retinal detachment is there hemorrhage endophthalmitis cataract because uh, rapidly diluted and repeat procedure necessary in this case topical application uh, in topical application this is limited penetration only less than 5% is drug is available and uh, rapid tear washout 
because our uh, tears uh, layer is always there uh, with, with each blinking drug is washed out poor patient compliance and uh, systemic administration is limited or viable penetration potential for systemic toxicity next is advantages we already discussed the, these things what are different advantages and disadvantages but we are discussing uh, for the recent advancement in this like intravitreal or periocular subconjunctival injections advantages improved drug uh, absorption no systemic toxicity delivered to the target site of the eye and disadvantage here is uh, injection display first order kinetics it is having short half life and uh, this is poor acceptance by the patient because it is invasive kind of technique so patient feel pain and they are not like this kind of uh, injection into the eye this is very fearful and dreadful for them and uh, implants these are biodegradable implants do not need to be removed this is advantage in this case and stabilization of drug we can do with the help of implants and the side effect is uh, but increase the risk uh, because of implant there are some side effects are there they increase the risk because of the side effect and uh, uncontrollable release of drug to the eye in this case uncontrollable release of the dry uh, drugs possible uh, sometimes burst effect is uh, there when implant is not successful then it is burst out and uh, all the drug is uh, released in one particular uh, time so it is known as burst effect another particle like micro particles nano particle liposomes they are increase half life uh, they decrease peak concentration and localized drug delivery so these are advantages but uh, uh, side effect associated is also there uh, burst effect is also possible here and uh, risk associated drug delivery uh, sometimes you know uh, some complications causes because of this thing cell encapsulation is patient compliance and limited to toxicity uh, but uh, the side effects are again side of operation risk of operation in cell encapsulation um, we, we want to encapsulate uh, drug inside means you have to operate it or some small incision is required so this is also painful procedure antiphoresis a uh, known invasive easy method it may be used in combination with other things and more patient compliance here but no sustained half life or risk of side effects frequent administration is so these are certain uh, limitations for this now these are the approaches which used the ocular delivery devices like uh, matrix type drug delivery systems in matrix type uh, some hydraulic soft contact lenses soluble ocular inserts scleral uh, buckling materials when it is capsular type drug delivery systems uh, that is ocusert implantable silicone rubber devices and uh, implantable drug delivery pumps are also used uh, like osmotic mini pumps or implantable infusion system and other delivery devices like OcuFit or BioCore, Lacrisalt, mini disc ocular therapeutic system that is also known as OTS. Uh, this is by Bosch and Lomb. Now we can we uh, study about uh, one by one uh, of this recent advancement. Contact lenses. Uh, you know, modern system of classified contact lenses, uh, three major types are available. Soft contact lenses or semi-soft or hard contact lenses. But generally, uh, hydrophilic soft contact lenses are used for uh, drug delivery. Okay, and uh, uh, acuity purpose also, visual acuity. These hydrophilic uh, soft contact lenses are made up of hydrogels. And the marketed products available in market uh, by the name of Bionite, Soft Lens. Uh, Bionite is from Griffin Labs and uh, Soft Lens is from the Bosch and Lomb. And uh, here drug is fluorescent. Fluorescent drug is we used uh, for the diagnostic purpose sometimes. And other drug we can use um, that is available uh, means by the literature review we come to know that the um, contact lenses of uh, this idoxuridine and polymyxin B, pilocarpine, sogd contact lenses are available. 
helocarpin soaked contact lenses is used for the glaucoma disorder and the ability to pre soaked hydrophilic lens so drug is pre soaked with this uh, soft contact lenses and uh, another contact lenses are made from the polyhydroxy phenol that is uh, hefilcon a this is the brand name of uh, php uh, that is copolymer uh, containing 80% is 2 hydroxy ethyl methacrylate that is uh, known as phema phema and 20% uh, n vinyl to pyrolidone and this soft contact lenses is having diameter 16 mm and their thickness is 0.3 mm and their hydration rate is a uh, 40 to 50% now using a molecular imprinting technology with the contact lenses also nowadays available uh, so that uh, particular drug is uh, uh, attached with that contact lenses for longer period of time these are some mechanism next is ocular inserts uh, ocular inserts are these are sterile preparation with a very thin multi layered drug impregnated solid or semi solid consistency devices these are uh, drug impregnated devices you can say these are placed into the cul de sac or conjunctival sac there is a conjunctiva there is a sac is there pocket like structure uh, you can put uh, this ocular insert there and these are available in soluble form or bioerodible form or insoluble form when you want to prepare soluble form of ocular inserts we we uh, we have to use natural polymer systems soluble ocular uh, uh, drug in, uh, inserts and polyvinyl alcohol inserts P, pvai means polyvinyl alcohol inserts and uh, when we want to prepare bioerodible then we use collagen shields an example is lacrisert mini disc an insoluble reservoir means you have to remove this uh, uh, insert after drug is removed uh, when total drug is absorbed there then it a ghost structure is removed from that particular part and these are diffusion based and osmotic based and the soft contact lenses that is pre soaked okay i'm getting are you listening properly everyone Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes, sir. Soluble inserts. Okay, soluble ocular insert. This is made up of polyvinyl alcohol inserts. These are very thin, elastic in nature, and uh, oval shape, sometimes plate shape, and these are impregnated with uh, antibiotics or sulfonamides, pilocarpine, atropine. so this different kind of uh, pva is available in the market okay so they also increase uh, the bioavailability uh, many folds but certain limitations like poor patient compliance and difficulty of self insertions you required a skilled person for uh, insertion of this kind of uh, inserts okay next is uh, sodi that is soluble ophthalmic drug inserts these are also very thin elastic in nature and oval plates type and their composition is uh, from the polymers and copolymers of polyacrylic amide vinyl pyrolidone polyvinyl pyrolidone and ethyl acrylate their weight is 15 to 16 mg and uh, within 10 to 15 seconds they are very soft and and uh, they turns to viscous liquids after 30 to 90 minutes becomes polymeric solutions uh, means after half an hour or in one hour they convert into the polymeric solutions so their advantage uh, means you have to replace after 4 to 12 eye drops okay single sodi application is this replace 4 to 12 eye drops you can say and once in the treatment for glaucoma and trachoma this uh, sodi treatment is uh, for the glaucoma means once you insert this sodi and it is for uh, you can say all the day you need not uh, put another kind of uh, any drops is required next advantages of uh, ocular inserts because uh, 
ocular inserts are you know increased residence time in our eye they are releasing drugs at slow and constant rate and accurate dosing is possible reduction of systemic absorption and better patient compliance is achieved with the help of ocular inserts some disadvantages is also associated like uh, capital disadvantage is ocular insert reside in their solidarity solidity means uh, you feel that certain uh, foreign particles in our eye so sometimes it is very discomfort feeling to the patient and uh, occasional inadvertent loss during sleep or while uh, interference with the vision sometimes uh, when you are uh, sleeping then uh, chances of uh, sleeping of this insert from the eye is possible or uh, sometime it is uh, interference with the vision we cannot uh, have uh, clear vision after putting uh, this insert means not for all but certain kind of insert is uh, this insert is causing vision loss but nowadays certain versions are available which is not uh, even given uh, us visual problem nowadays the, uh, with uh, without vision problem we can use uh, this inserts but this is general uh, disadvantage you can say and difficult placement of the ocular insert the, this is also very difficult to uh, place insert into the eye so a, a skilled person is required for that so what are the different criteria for control release ocular inserts this is a uh, comfort should be there ease of handling reproducibility of the release kinetics sterility stability and ease of manufacturing okay so these are some uh, desired criteria and uh, there are certain evaluation procedures for ocular inserts means uh, many uh, evaluation parameters are there can be uniformity of thickness uniformity of weight drug content percentage moisture absorption percentage moisture loss surface ph irritancy test stability testing and uh, in vitro drug release or in vivo drug release microbiological testing so these are certain uh, evaluation procedures used next uh, uh, very famous uh, you can say uh, in situ forming gels when phase transition taking place in eye when you put uh, eye drop and it converts into the gel form into the eye cavity uh because of uh, certain responses like temperature stimuli responses you can say by temperature or ion or ph or lysozymes and we want to use uh, this polyxamer or xyloglucan so phase transition by you can say thermogelling polymers these are thermogelling like polyxamer pluronix tetronix these all are uh thermogelling polymers another example is polyxamer 4007 plus chitosan or polyethylene oxide polypropylene oxide or polyethylene co polymers these are co polymer with chitosan so and also poly and isopropyl acrylamide these are well researched thermogelling polymers which are used for in situ gelling forming gels and uh, for uh, ion exchange uh, Uh, capability we use certain alginic acid sodium alginate gel and gums keratinin so these are example of ion exchange because uh, in our eyes calcium uh, ions are there they are act with the this kind of polymers and they convert drop into the gel form okay and when it is ph sensitive then cellulose acetate phthalate carbomer these are the examples of ph sensitive and uh, lysozyme protein uh, when we use xanthan gum uh, so xanthan gum is example of protein uh, in our eyes other than this uh, uv radiations and light sensitivity they also convert uh, gel into the sol sol into the gel form okay next is a uh, scleral buckling material scleral buckling material is, these are two types one is gelatin film and a solid silicon elastomer okay solid silicon elastomer yeah solid silicon rubber uh, that is used for uh, buckling material uh, some antibiotic preparations like chloramphenicol lincomycin uh, 
latest fourth quino fourth generation quinolones like uh, uh, this is uh, you can say getty floxacin or um, uh, uh, mix of floxacin these are uh, available in the scleral buckling material form first immersing the devices into the echos antibiotic solutions nowadays this moxifloxacin is very common available uh, in this form and uh, they are dried they found sustained release of this antibiotic from this uh, devices then you will achieve a sustained release action and the uses is to prevent post operative infections after retinal det detachment surgery so uh, we prevent post operative infections when you just put this buckling material scleral buckling material in eye then you need not put any eye drops for longer period of time and we can save our eye cavity from the bacterial infections next is ocuzert ocuzert is a 13.4 to 5.5 mm uh, size uh, device capsular type drug delivery system and uh, this was first developed by elja corporation this is oval shape and flexible ocular insert and annular ring impregnated with uh, titanium dioxide for flexibility and dimension i already uh, mentioned and uh, thickness is 0.3 mm and these are two types are available ocuzert pilo 20 and ocuzert pilo 40 for the glaucoma cases material is drug reservoir is uh, pilocarpine carrier material here we use is alginic acid and red controller membrane is uh, made up of ethylene vinyl acetate copolymer membrane and energy source here is a concentration of uh, pilocarpine how much concentration of pilocarpine that is the energy source and flux enhancer uh, in this ocuzert is di2 ethyl hexyl phthalate is flux enhancer next one is implantable silicon rubber devices that is the drug delivery device for uh, hydrophobic drugs uh, like bcnu that is bis to chloroethyl 1 nitrosourea this is intraocular malignancy agent this is used for the intraocular cancer cases uh, this is used there and this device consists of two sheets of silicon tubular glued together only at the edges of the silicon adhesive and a tube of the same material same material extended from the devices and devices released bcn at a constant rate of 200 to 400 microgram per hour is available with this next is the implantable drug delivery pumps or osmotic uh, ophthalmic pump that is also from the lj corporation and this provide constant drug delivery rate with pumping duration of up to 2 weeks and the implantable infusion system uh, that is uh, coming by the name of infused in market this permitted long term infusion uh, infusion via the refilling we can refill it uh, with the help of infusion and drug pellet coated with polyvinyl alcohol and ethylene vinyl acetate we can also use this uh, as osmotic pump and uh, another example is polysulfone capillary fiber pcf uh, so these are the different kind of uh, implantable drug delivery pumps and you know uh, these systems uh, will be uh, more and more in common in future also because uh, scientists are looking for the systems which are one off type and if once you use and uh, you forget about uh, any kind of uh, drug delivery once you insert it it will provide a sustained release of the drug for prolonged period of time in future also you will see that uh, this traditional or conventional type of doses form will be obsolete because we have so many implants uh, in research and uh, very soon you will see that uh, many implantable drug delivery systems are available in the market lek research uh, these are sterile road shaped devices composition is uh, hydroxypropyl cellulose uh, without preservative and this devices have long retention means for two weeks or more we use uh, this kind of lack research and uh, they provide sustained release features and their weight is 5 mg their dimension is 12.72 3.5 mm 
and these are used for uh, dry eye treatment keratitis you know uh, nowadays so many cases of dry eye syndrome is increasing so uh, this lacquer inserts are using more and more nowadays because we are using so much computer and laptop or mobile so dry eye syndrome is very common uh, everywhere so this lacquer insert of providing artificial tears for solution and many other nano suspension type of uh, deliveries along with this uh, next one is mini disc it's uh, shaped like contact lens with convex front and concave back surface in contact with eyeball um, but the diameter is less than uh, you can say contact lens that is just 4 to 5 mm in diameter and their composition is silicone based uh, polymer and hydrophilic or hydrophobic both are uh, both mini discs are available and uh, this provide drug release for 170 hours you know this is from the you know research uh, of certain uh, scientists next one is hydrogel uh, template strategy you, this hydrogel template strategy is developed to the fabricate homogeneous polymeric microparticles and uh, versatility of this hydrogel template strategy for development of nano wafer based ocular drug delivery systems with the help of this hydrogel template strategy what we prepare we prepare nano wafers this is just a, a wafers type structure and but size is nano size and uh, on ocular surface it release drug uh, very slowly and dissolve over time and thus increasing ocular bioavailability and enhancing efficiency to treat eye injuries. These are used for eye injuries and eye burn cases. Uh, this hydrogel template strategy is very much useful. And in future, this quantum dose, these are quite promising uh, doses form, you can say. These are nanoscale semiconductor crystals with characteristic size and tunable optical properties they are having and they deliver bright and stable fluorescence suitable for bioimaging and labeling. Whenever you wanted to some bioimage of eye, interior of the eye, uh, you can use this quantum dots and this potentially provide range of diagnostic and therapeutic application in ophthalmology. So the use of quantum doors are also very much uh, in future you will see uh, in diagnostic and therapeutic purposes uh, in glaucoma so much uh, you can say quantum doors are coming in future and also scientists are working on quantum doors to uh, they are doing uh, Mars expedition uh, you cannot took uh, simple medications like type of doses from a tablet capsules or uh, other kind of syrup or sus suspension but they are looking for such drugs which you can carry with you like quantum dots or dendrimers okay to the uh, mars expedition when some person first time will go to the mars and they will take such kind of medicines with them okay so a uh, lot of research is going on nowadays on quantum dots and similar kind of uh, technologies. This is retrometabolic delivery systems. This provide a uh, combination of SAR and SMR. This is for the soft drug design or you can say pro drug design. And uh, this is chemical delivery system design with help of retrometabolic delivery systems. And next is chemical delivery systems. And this basic principles of retrometabolic uh, designs approach is drug metabolism undergoes should usually involve a very uh, early stage of the design process okay and uh, drug targeted by soft drug like the soft drug analogs or activated soft compounds active metabolites types of drugs control release of endogenous soft materials or inactive metabolic approaches so these are certain cds next is nanoparticles this is particulate system of ocular drug delivery systems. Uh, when you see nanoparticles, this uh, drug absorption in the eye enhanced significantly with the help of nanoparticles uh, in comparison to eye drop solutions. And their size ranges 10 to 1000 nanometer particles are used for this purpose. 
these are supramolecular structure complexes and composite belongs to nanoparticular systems means uh, these nanoparticles are formed into the form of complexes or composites like example is microemulsion or liposomes niosomes dendrimers or uh, cyclodextrins these all are part of the nanopart you can say nanoparticles okay and different chemicals or you can say different composition of the uh, polymers like polyethylene glycols polyalkyne siloacrylates that is known as uh, pseca uh, nanoparticles and nanocapsules improves corneal penetration with the help of nanoparticles corneal penetration increased okay both kind of hydrophilic and lipophilic drugs we can uh, use uh, with help of this limitation kya hoti because the disruption of corneal epithelium cell membrane is there and uh, another example is poly epsilon caprolactone nano capsules this increase ocular penetration of the lipophilic drugs such as metipranolol bituxolol timolol these are uh, poly epsilon caprolactone is used uh, this uh, pcl uh, plus drug nanoparticles available in market uh, some brand names are available for this and this uh, taken up by the corneal epithelium cells without damaging the cell membrane main advantage of this nanoparticles is they not uh, disrupt our uh, epithelium cells and uh, because uh, their particle size is so uh, so less they can easily penetrate the epithelium cells and their nature is colloidal in nature carrier so main factor responsible for favorable corneal transport of the drug and uh, these are produced from udrigit rs100 udrigit rl100 so these are some examples there are so many polymers are available but these are uh, uh, already researched polymers liposomes liposomes are non toxic or non irritant biodegradable in nature and their ability to incorporate almost any type of drug regardless of their solubility uh, either it is hydrophilic or lipophilic both kind of drugs you can use with liposomes and intimate contact with cornea and conjunctival surfaces they protect the drug from the metabolic enzymes because the, this is also a problem some drugs are uh, deteriorated with uh, metabolic enzymes but when we use liposomes we can save them we can protect them and uh, some phospholipids are used for uh, preparation like phosphatidylcholine phosphatidic acid sphingomyelin phosphatidylserine cardio so these are some phospholipid which are used for preparation of the liposomes and four fold increase in passage of penicillin g across rabbit cornea this from the study of uh, one scientist uh, about the liposomes because uh, how much drug is in, you can say increase or enhance the indoxol passes in uh, when you study on the rabbit or red cornea we find that uh, there are many folds of uh, penetration is achieved and formulation when you compare the formulation with the solution so there are this kind of things similarly niosomes also uh, no ionic surface and, and they provide us uh, so many advantages like uh, they are providing uh, patient compliance they offer accommodate hydrophilic and lipophilic and epiphilic drug oities and use for variety of drugs and uh, their characteristics such as size or lamerity these are vesicles can be very depending on their requirement and uh, optically they are osmotically active and stable they increase the stability of entrapped drug and they improve the therapeutic performance of the drug by the protecting it from the biological environment and resisting restricting effect to target cells thereby reducing the clearance of the drug uh, certain disadvantages like physical instability aggregation leaking of the entrapped drug fusion or busting effect is possible with the niosomes similarly uh, pharmacosomes and discomes they also provide certain advantages uh, drug metabolism can be decreased or control release profile can be achieved with help of this and minimal opacity imposes to hindrance to the vision 
and increased patient compliance zero order release can be achieved with help of discoms now so many advantages of uh, vesicular systems like uh, no difficulty in insertion as the case of ocular inserts no tissue irritation and damage caused by the penetration enhancers and this provide patient compliance uh, vesicular are biocompatible in nature so minimum side effects are there and uh, they release the drugs as biocompatible form and prevent the metabolism of the drug from the enzyme present in tear or corneal epithelium interface and they provide a prolonged and sustained release of the drug so these are uh, some micro needles also technique available uh, for uh, uh, drug transportation and certain uh, nano carrier based delivery advantage like higher solubility target action sustained action drug pro uh, drug protection higher bioavailability these are various advantages so these are certain uh, technologies available for posterior segment uh, ocular like duracell drug delivery system nova du drug delivery technology uh, one vation uh, tramsinolone acetonide drug delivery technology encapsulated cell technology supracoroid drug delivery utilizing hollow micro needles and micro surgical cannulas these are technique for the posterior segment ocular drug delivery technology next is uh, novel ocular drug delivery technology which are available in um, already available in market like colloidal nano carriers nano micelles nano particles liposome dendrimers micro needles nano wafers these are available and these are some examples with some drugs uh, that containing okay next one is a non invasive drug uh, delivery system for posterior disorder like small molecules biotech drugs uh, nanogens which are uh, used with the non invasive drug delivery technique now uh, certain future prospectives of uh, uh, advancement in ocular drug delivery systems various strategies uh, for enhancing bioavailability using solubility or retention or permeability enhancers drug loaded uh, contact lenses nano particle technology smart drug delivery systems they are payload in response to stimulus ocular implants and delay or prevent blindness could be made by artificial corneas in future it is possible that uh, no people will be blind because uh, there is availability of artificial corneas is available and drug eluted intraocular lenses will available in future novel materials for vitreous tumor replacement as life long one of implantable drug delivery depots uh, drug depots are available uh, for life long put uh, the depot inside and uh, you forget about the life long and uh, whatever uh, this is like uh, glaucoma you just put one depot inside our eye and that will provide a uh, drug uh, requirement and this will improve you can say potentially realize quality of life benefit this will provide us quality of life benefit with the help of this and ocular uh, drug delivery is a complex field and uh, with help of quality efficacy and safety this should be the optimal parameter for drug delivery to the eye in this context more clinical studies are necessary to provide further information and uh, insight into the new ocular delivery systems and uh, this uh, complex field you know ocular is very a complex field and uh, this multiple factors determine the drug concentration and uh, efficacy at the target site so uh, scientists are working on uh, target site efficacy uh, drug loading and released uh, required release rates and uh, this is Uh, strongly dependent on the local site of the drug administration and location of the target tissue in this uh, presentation i simply guideline the dose and delivery system selection to augment decision making and uh, digital drug delivery uh, some initial drug delivery systems in recent ocular drug developments so i hope uh, this help in understanding certain parameters and procedures and different types of uh, recent advances in drug delivery systems 
in ocular drug delivery field. These are some best preferences which I uh, use. And thank you so much for patient listening and providing me enough time for speaking. Any queries any uh, person has, you can tell me. Okay. If anybody I'm having any query or questions, please write down in chat box. <laughs> One question from uh, the participant side. Hmm. Which step is to be taken to avoid uh -huh. the drainage of the drugs from the ocular cavity? Yeah, we discuss on that particular matter that uh, because uh, because of this drainage, because of uh, tear turnover and uh, all these things, we increase uh, if we increase the viscosity of that that particular area with the help of in situ gelling or we have, with the help of some eco adhesive polymers. So we can uh, remove this uh, or we can remove the problem of drainage of the drug from the ocular cavity. So these are certain uh, approaches in situ gel or mucoaddition, bioaddition, nanoparticles, smart drug delivery systems. All these things are for the uh, this problem. Yes. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, any technique is available for the treatment mm -hmm. of genetically based blinding diseases yeah nowadays uh, some uh, some techniques are using uh, by some ophthalmologist this is uh, some robotics based in which this uh, uh, and uh, other uh, are used for making uh, the person uh, this in uh, you can say in uh, just in research at present, there is no such as a person is a person is blind from the childhood is able to see. It is going in future that artificial corneas and everything is making. They are preparing uh, this uh, artificial vitreous tumor also. So in future, you will see that uh, this uh, whatever problem related with uh, nerves, optical nerves problem, we will find out the solution for that, and the person will able to see in future also. Because the optical fiber solution is not getting yet, because it is so fine and so uh, you can say fragile kind of. Millions of uh, optical fibers are uh, responsible for uh, clear seeing. Okay. So one more yeah. question uh, is which method is used to evaluate the isotonicity of ocular formulation? Isotonicity, uh, that is by this general um, method we use. Uh, same method is used here also. Okay. And NACL method or something like that. Oh, okay. Or RBC's, RBC's method we can use here. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, ma'am, for uh, providing me this enough time. An opportunity. Yes, ma'am. Okay, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Mega Gandhi, Assistant Professor, the HN Shukla Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, and I am here to present the vote of thanks for today's webinar. I would like to thank our guest webinar speaker, Dr. Kamal Singh Rai, for joining, lighting us. Today's webinar was full of knowledge and interesting things. It gave the deep knowledge insight into the topic and also revealed facts. The point where, so, where sir told us the techniques that available in the market or under research was really very informative. I am pretty sure that the precious knowledge that sir shared with us will definitely help us in our studies and future. Thank the sir for taking out the time, the schedule, and enlightening us with knowledge. I would like to thank our president of HN Pharmacy College, Dr. Nehal Sukla, sir, 
and managing director dr mehul rupani sir our campus trustee mr sanjay wadar sir and head of department dr dhara chawda ma'am for giving me permission to organizing this webinar session and inviting the head of department and associate professor dr kamal singh rathod sir to conduct it i want organizing committee who really work hard to make the event successful also thankful to all the participants to present here for paying your attention and learning i would end my speech here thank you